Jesus bless this message and I plead the blood of Jesus on it in Jesus name. Amen. Okay, make sure you click the bell and subscribe because they're removing subscribers and they're removing some of your comments, YouTube, that we found a bunch of them in the studio held under review that have been there for months. <laughs> and we had no idea that you even commented. So make sure you click the bell. Go ahead and and, and if you don't get a reply you know, or a heart, I mean, well, then obviously we didn't see it. Because we don't remove comments unless they're sarcastic and demonic. We take them off, you know, for everybody else's protection. Other than that, no. Okay, but we're going to go through some symbology in, Re in Revelation chapter 12 and 13. So the rest of this week, at least Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and probably even Thursday, yeah, we'll be in Revelation 12 and 13. So you can understand some symbology that they use in there. Um, so you can better understand the great deception that we're in today, that, that the devil's hard at work wearing out the saints and deceiving the saints, if it's possible. So it won't be possible to deceive you if it's not possible, if you are abiding in the Holy Spirit, y'all. And he, the Holy Spirit abiding in you. But you got to make that happen. Okay? It's up to you. Um, also, we are in exam week right there. We do this every three months. It's huge. There's like 160 or 180, I forget, questions. Every three months, church, every, every, everybody listening, new, old, I don't care. Go to jesusdoers.com. See up there, in, up there in the corner, you see the tab. Click on the tab. Go to the test page. Take the exam. Write your answers down in your notebooks like this. Like maybe you, do, you need to keep it in order too because you're going to take it again in three months. And you're going to go back and see what you put for number one. What number two, did you grow? Did you not grow? So if you're asked question number one, put it like that. And if your answer is three, then put it like that. Question number two, do it like that. If your question is five, then put it five. On and on. So you can go back in three months and compare your answers. Are you growing? Are you not growing? Are you going backwards? What? The Bible tells you to examine yourself. Make sure you're found worthy to even make it back to God. You're found worthy to stand in front of Jesus Christ. And it'll help you grow because you are are supposed to continue when you get the Holy Spirit, when you get saved and you receive the Holy Spirit, you are supposed to continue to receive that Holy Spirit. It ain't a one-time thing. It's to continue to get more and more and more and more and more and more until we get back home and you need that help from the Holy Spirit. Okay? So that's on JesusDoers.com. Please write that down. Keep it in a notebook, a fresh notebook, just an exam notebook so there's no confusion. Okay, now, and, and we're leaving that up there till Sunday. After Sunday, y'all, we're taking it down. So I'm really, what I'm trying to do is encourage you guys to make God the first part of your busy, busy day. Everybody got this busy life, kids, job, work, husband, wife, whatever. You know what? Don't, don't find a reason to put God second, third, and fourth. And most of y'all don't even put him in your day. Don't try to find a reason to put him second. Put him first. So you know what? If you got a busy life, go to bed an hour early and get up an hour early. Okay? And, and spend that at first hour with the Lord. And spend an hour early if you go to bed. Make time, y'all. You should be you should be fitting your busy day around God, not fitting God into your busy day. That's backwards. So make time. Okay? All right. And we're taking it down Sunday. So go ahead and get started on that. And bring it to the barn Sunday. The barn is our church, new people. Go to JesusDoers.com. Coming through the big red barn, you'll see the link. That's our church. The days and times and hours are up there. And I want to thank those of you too. It's not my birthday yet, y'all. My birthday is this Wednesday, November 29th. But a few of you guys have already sent me birthday wishes. You sent me birthday gifts. Man, I'm, I'm flabbergasted, really. And you know what? Like I was telling you on Facebook, I never, I've, I, I used to get my teachers gifts, you know, uh, Apple pencil holders and stuff like that. I used to get my teachers stuff on their birthday, but I never expected anything, any of y'all to get me something for my birthday. I really never did expect it. And I really appreciate it though, y'all, for me being your teacher. And you guys really, I got a good group of people that really look out for me too. And I thank you for that. I thank you for the encouragement. Thank you guys for being a friend to me too. God bless you guys. 
I thank you. But it ain't till Wednesday. In Jesus' name. All right, but thank you all. Okay. Uh, anything else am I forgetting? No. Re Revelation chapter 12. Let's go there right now. In your Bibles. You can pick it up and go there. And let's read it real quick. Okay. Now a great sign appeared in, in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun. With the moon under her feet. And on her head, a garland of 12 stars. Now, I'm asking you in the comment section, who is this woman? Who is this woman right now in the comment section? Picking it up at two. Then, being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. In the comment section right now, who is this child? Verse three. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head who is this dragon in the comment section y'all his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born she bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Again, who was this child? Number two, who was this child? And her child was caught up to God and his throne. So this child was, to, was, he come here to, was sent here to rule all nations with a rod of iron. This child was caught up to God. This child has a throne. Who is this child? Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,260 days. Okay, now going to seven. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven anymore, any longer. So the great dragon was cast out that serpent of old called the devil and satan who deceives the whole world he was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him to where to the earth these fallen angels the devil is roaming to and fro on this earth looking for you the fallen angels are all over the place except for the ones that had the sex with the human women the rest of them, they're here, y'all. They're on this earth, right here. They're in your leadership. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. Who in the comment section is the accuser of the brethren? In the comment section, he's accusing you before God day and night because he's been cast down here on this earth. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, by the word and the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore, rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. 13. Now, when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who is the woman, y'all. Again, please tell me. He persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. Who gave birth to the male child, y'all? In the comment section. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she's nourished for a time and times and a half a time from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman 
And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman. Who's this woman? And he went to make war with the rest of her offspring. <laughs> Who was the rest of the woman's offspring, y'all? In the comment section, let me tell you who it was. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who kept the commandments of God and had the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, we're going to stop right there. Right there. False religion, y'all. False religion is everywhere. Jesus told me I have no part of religion or denomination. I told you this. Denomination, that's the church, right? You got Catholic. They pray to the man behind the curtain of 50 Hail Marys and they're forgiven, right? You got your Baptists who don't believe speaking in tongues at all is for today. They don't believe the gifts of the Holy Spirit is for today, okay? You have your Pentecost who believe if a woman wears pants, she'll go to hell. Or if she wears jewelry or, uh, they, you know, cuts her hair, she'll go to hell. It's all, the church is all divided up. Jesus has no part of that mess. It's all divided up. Then you got religion. You got your Buddhists who pray to that big Buddha belly man. You got your Jews who don't believe the Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah at all, who never obeyed God in the first place. You've got, you know, it's all, it's all divided up, y'all. All divided. Jesus, you got your Muslim. Jesus has no part of any of that. None of it. Okay, what it is with Jesus is a personal, intimate relationship between you and the Messiah, you and Jesus Christ, okay? So, have you ever thought about the devil in Bible prophecy? You ever thought about him? When we look at the book of Revelation, we see some of Satan's main objectives and his motivations. And we learn not only of his hatred of mankind leading to a future deception, which is there's more deception coming. Strong delusions, man. Also, and coming, the coming wrath is on its way. He knows that. But these aren't just the future. These are, it's not some far off distant time where this is going to get worse. It's starting to happen now. The deception is there all over the place. Satan has, y'all, and some of you come here and do it. Some of you come here and do it. Satan has the church arguing, arguing with another Christian, coming with nasty accusations. Again, when you go to accuse somebody of something, who is the accuser of the brother? It ain't Jesus. Who is it in the comment section? Those that come and say, you're doing this, you're this, you're that, you're this. Who's speaking through you? Not Jesus. Who's the accuser of the brother in the comment section? These, these uh, deceptions that the devil's using impacts you today. Today. So we're going to start with the opening of Revelation 12. Uh, now a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and with the moon under her feet. And on her head a garland of 12 stars. Then, being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. That's verses 1 and 2. A dragon soon appears, intent on devouring the child at its birth. Look at verses 3 and 4. We're dissecting now. The dragon is revealed to be Satan, y'all, the devil, in verse 9, right? So as with the rest of the book, this fantastical symbolic imagery, it tells a very important story here. Okay, and in examining some of this symbolism, because we're in examination week this week, we're examining everything. Jesus taught me to examine the entire word as you're reading it. Don't just read it. it. Won't do you no purpose to read it. Study it. Examine it. Okay, so we're going to examining some of the symbolism. We're going to recognize Satan's influence, not only in the future, but right now today as well. Okay, hold on, y'all. I need to get a chair. <clears throat> Excuse me. I need to sit down here. Yeah. So Satan is out here deceiving the church, trying to deceive you. Okay, the child here, the, the, the devil's war 
is against God and you. Do you understand that? He come and he makes war with the saints. And he overcomes the saints. Okay. So the child here was to rule all nations and was caught up to heaven. See it in verse 5? He was to rule all nations and cut up to heaven. That's a reference to Jesus Christ. How many of you put the child as Jesus Christ? If you did, praise the Lord. Amen. So he ascended to heaven after his resurrection. So the woman on one level was his mother Mary giving birth to him. But there's more to the story. It's also a picture of, did you put for the woman Israel, y'all? Because the woman here is referring to Israel. In a prophetic dream in Genesis 37, Joseph, son of the uh, patriarch Joseph, I mean Jacob, or you call him Israel, uh, he saw the sun, he saw the moon, 11 stars bowing before him. And that represented his parents and his 11 brothers being under his authority. And this actually happened after the Pharaoh in Egypt placed him in charge of, of running the country. And if you've been to our, our church in the barn, Sometimes we show you the live play on David. It's phenomenal. I mean, on Joseph, y'all. It's phenomenal. And we got one coming up the first week of December in the barn. You don't want to miss it, y'all. It's a couple hours long, but it is phenomenal for Christmas. You don't want to miss that play. But I want you to take notice of, this, of uh, the symbol of 11 stars and 11 brothers. And, and uh, another for Joseph. The 12 stars came to signify, what do you think it came to signify in the comment section? 12 stars. What was that a symbol for? The 12 descended, the 12 tribes descended from these 12 brothers. The 12 tribes of Israel. But the woman in Revelation 12 symbolizes more than just Joseph's family. The son chosen to be the light of the world represents not only Christ. But God's other children too. Amen? And her offspring. And, and his offspring. See it there? So that was, uh, that's what it said there. It was later given as a mention as offspring in verse 17. So the symbolism of the woman here includes not only Mary as a representative mother among the nation of Israel, but also the collective body of the spiritual Israel of God. The one true church, y'all, made up of all of the followers of the way. Because back then there was no, it wasn't called Christianity. It wasn't called Christians. The, they were called followers of the way. Okay? And that's included the followers of the way. All right, so the mention of the dragon, ready to devour the child at his birth. Well, that recalls what happened when Jesus was born. Amen? With, with, with uh, Satan launching a war against him. You remember? And as we uh, see in the next chapter, Satan was the power behind the Roman Empire. Okay? And he used the Roman appointed king over the Jewish nation, Herod, who wanted to eliminate and kill any potential threat to his throne. So he... You know, he tried he, to try to under, undermine God's plan. That's what he tried to do. He wanted to kill anything, any potential, get rid of it that was a threat to his throne. Get rid of all the firstborn kids. Get rid of them. Right? Matthew 2 says that when Herod learned of the Messiah's recent birth in Bethlehem, he had all the children there and in the surrounding areas under two years old put to death. It's a threat to his throne. Right? But yet God wasn't about to allow the Messiah to be killed at this time. No. There was a time and place for that to happen. You guys don't understand there's time where God is. There is. God created time. There's a time and a place for everything, and it's in his time, not yours. It's not like your time either. But he had a, he there was a time he knew that Jesus had to die and how it had to happen. This wasn't the time. Okay? So he helped Jesus. He helped Mary. He helped Joseph. He helped them escape to Egypt until Herod died. You know the story. And just as Satan was prevented from destroying Jesus at that time, he's going to be prevented from destroying the, this woman in Revelation 12. Okay? 
Our story continues in the account here after Christ's ascension to heaven. So we see her fleeing into the wilderness. Look at verse 6. She flees into the wilderness. The picture of going forward in Revelation 12 is the church as a whole taking refuge where it has a place prepared of God during the during God's wrath, during the three and a half times, time and a half time, the last three and a half years. The Bible's very clear about it. You will be protected during that time. God's wrath. When God removes his spirit off this earth, because his spirit is in you, your Holy Spirit is in you. When he removes his spirit, just like the Bible tells you, you go. Okay? So it tells you there are times, times, and half time. That's exactly what it is. Okay, so, but before that, Satan will, W-I-L-L big, will persecute God's people. Those of you that think you have nothing to go through, I'm so sorry to disappoint you. But what you need to focus on is getting your armor on and keeping it on. How do you do that? You obey God because you love him. And you walk in it, baby. You keep on obeying God in everything. I told you guys, how many of you right now out there... Look down on people. You see someone in your neighborhood. Maybe they have on a sweatsuit. Got a little bit. Ain't shaved in about uh, six months. Hair kind of scraggly. And you get all nervous saying, oh, they look like a thief. They look like a robber. Oh, I don't want that person around. Oh, I don't want that person in my yard. Let alone my How dare you? How many of you is a thief and a robber sitting in this, in this video right now listening to me? Honey, there's more of you listening to me right now than there is in walking in the world. How many of you have given to God what belongs to him every time you get it? Not what, you, what belongs to him. How many of you pay your tithes and offerings to God? How many of you keep it in your pocket and panel your walls like God said, but you let the church go unfinished? How many of you? You got no right to call anybody a thief and a robber. There's more thieves and robbers in the house of God than there is outside of it. In the church, they steal from God. Okay? So, how do you abide in God? You obey him in everything. Yes, even in that. You obey him and you know more than that, you want to. Your heart is all in it because you love God. And you continue in it. So yeah, God will persecute uh, Satan. Satan will persecute God's people, and God will allow it. Okay, you got to go through. You got to be purged. You got to. He calls it the final test of your faith in Revelation fourteen. The final test of your faith that you claim to have. You better be able to back up that claim that you make out your mouth that you got faith, y'all. And you better be found worthy to stand in front of Jesus Christ when He comes to stand in front of you. Better obey God, y'all, because you love him and everything. But, you know, to a point, God will protect his people from Satan. But that's not the end of the story. And God will protect you in the end from the devil forever. Why? Because he's already destroyed. The end of the story, y'all, is the best story that there ever could be. God does protect you from Satan. Not here right now. He can. He can help you. But you got to fight to do. But he'll send you the helper, the Holy Spirit. Help you, okay, if you turn to him. But yeah, he protects you from Satan because he's going to throw Satan into hell forever. You understand that? And he gives you a new home without Satan. So God protects you from Satan. But that's not the end of the story. Satan is not going to give up. Understand this. The church is the one that's given up, y'all. The church is the one that got argumentative spirits. Don't give God what belongs to him. Don't help the teachers and preachers who's earnestly helping you. They don't help the poor. The church doesn't get up and put God first on their day to pray to God. The church is, doesn't help their brother. The church is the one that's given up, not the devil. The devil runs circles around most of you listening to me right now. So Satan's not going to give up either. He's relentless in bringing persecution against the church, you guys. Do you understand that? He's relentless. Look that word up. In bringing persecution against you. He wants to demolish God's plan. Do you understand that? He wants to do away with any chance that God would succeed. He don't get it yet. He doesn't quite get it yet. 
So he's going to try to kill God's people at the end. Do you understand that? He's going to wage all-out war against God, against his angels, and against humanity as well. Revelation 12, 7, look at it. It says, war broke out in heaven. Okay, this is a time when God throws the devil to the earth with his fallen angels, and he come here to wreak havoc, okay? So, the great dragon was cast out that serpent hole called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He deceives. It says, it don't say he deceives, but he tries to. It says he does deceive the whole world, even the elect, if, if it were possible. It's possible to deceive the world. Who is the elect, y'all? You, me and you, the church. How can you not be deceived? Because you better be stayed up and prayed up, brothers and sisters. You better be prayed up and stayed up. Prayed up means you verbally doing it. You talking to God. Stayed up means you're obeying everything he told you to do. The church, you guys just don't want to obey God. What's going on with you, man? What's going on with you that you guys just can't seem to obey God? In anything. You can't seem to put God first. Church, you need to wake up. The devil's like, ding dong. Uh, I ain't going to ask you to let me in because you already did. I'm here. Because you got to allow him in. And when you don't obey God, don't put anything this world has, y'all, before God. What's wrong with you people? You want, you must, a lot of you must want to be attacked by the devil. You want the sicknesses and diseases and death and hell to come against you and your family. Is that what you want? Well, then don't, then do something about it then. Do something about it. Start knowing God, seeking God, talking to him, praying to him. Start walking in his word, his will, his way, his purposes. Start obeying God. Start acting like you love him. That's what God wants to say to you because verse 12 says, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. The devil has come down to you and buddy, he's ticked off at you and the whole situation. The devil's come down to you having great wrath because he knows he has a short time. And he knows, church, Christian, what you're supposed to have should you want it. He knows the glorious city you got waiting on you, the presence of God, man. You be in God's presence physically. You will get that sweet smell of aroma of heaven that God allows me to smell sometimes. You will be in perfection bliss. Everything you wish you had here. So much you don't even know what you want. It's so much better than you could imagine. You really don't know what you want because it's too good for you here. That's why you got to wait to go there. He knows what you got coming to you, y'all, should you want it. And he don't want you to have it because he lost it. He gave it up. So he wants you to go with him. Brothers and sisters, why would you let him take you like that? Why do some of you let him? Because you got to let him. You understand that? So try showing God. Try giving yourself to God. Jesus told me, people want me to save them. Help me, help me, help me. I want my doctor, the, the, a diagnosis coming. Help me, help me. I want to, you know, I got, I'm about to lose my marriage. Help me, help me. I'm about to lose my baby. Help me, help me. But they don't want to make me Lord of their life. Do you understand that? Everybody wants God to do something for them. Fix this, fix that. But how about making him Lord of your life? That everything you do gives thanks and grace to thanks to God, and you're gonna do, you're gonna worship God no matter what. How many of you? I have a church, brothers and sisters, I can tell you, not that many. God says, children, rise up. Rise up. The devil's come down to you having great wrath. When, and I'll tell you something. When Satan, there will be a battle. There will be a final battle. And when Satan loses that battle with you and God's angels, when he, he's got a battle with these battling with these angels, then he's going to turn his direct rage against the people of God, against you, symbolized by the woman and her offspring in verse 13. So 
this refers primarily to the church. That's, that's us. We are the church. Not a building. A building is not a church. You and I are the church. Satan's going to bring severe tribulation among the people which we're seeing today. Please understand this. He's going to bring severe tribulation to the people of the nation of Israel as well. And the church is intended is, is very plain. The, the intent of hurting the church and pulling the church into that is in, right there in verse 17. Now, those of you that know last year before God took me to Israel, those of you that was with me then, you know God said, go, go now. We went. And he told me there's going to be W-A dot, 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 dot for YouTube's sake, R. You know what I mean? And in Israel next year, and it will be with, and I ran, I ran so far away, oh, you know, with that country. What you see right now, God told me this is going to happen next year with the very people you see it happening with. I got to tell that to my tour guide last year, last October, not this past one, the one before that, October, that this is kind of going to happen next year right here in Israel, but it's also going to involve Christians. Gonna be like a second Holocaust in a way for you guys. That's why we had to come right now. So yeah, he remembers that. He don't believe Jesus is Messiah yet, but he he wants to know. He believes I hear God. He don't question that. He doesn't because everything I've told him has happened. Because he knows I hear God, he just don't know how. But you know what? It's intended for the church to this persecution that you think you ain't going to be here for, you will be here. The Bible tells you, y'all, how long, but you're not here for the last three and a half years. Just like it tells you in Daniel, and just like it tells you in Revelation we just read. Three and a half years. You're removed, y'all, if you're a child of God from the last three and a half years, which is God's vengeance. That's his wrath, baby. You ain't here for that. So this is one reason Jesus put me here because he said, my own people, my own people don't know my word. They don't think they got nothing to go through because some quote unquote famous pastor told them you ain't got nothing to go through because, because you're, you're so special. <laughs> uh, the Bible, if you just read it right now, tells you just the opposite. Okay. You are special to God. He died. He came and died for you. He came as a man to die for you. But you're going to go through the purging. You're going to go through the fire. And the Bible specifically tells it to you. People just don't want to, to believe it or read it. They don't look at it yourself. People don't want to see it. It specifies that the woman's offspring is targeted by the dragon. And it is those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. They will get persecuted. You will get persecuted. Y'all stop trying to make the Bible a lie, you bad shepherds out there. And I want you to pay attention that these are not just those labeled Christians. Okay, now here's what I've been trying to tell y'all for two weeks. This isn't just for those who label themselves as a Christian. No. But I thought you said, Kim, that, that it's going to be all, all the church. All the church, yes, the true church. Not people who call themselves a Christian. It's going to be for those who believe in and obey God's commandments. The real Christians. The real church. Just because you call yourself a Christian. Well, that don't mean you're one. There's a, there's a special place in hell, y'all, for people that call themselves a Christian. It's one of the worst parts you can go to. Because you played games and you used the name of Jesus in your life and the whole time that Satan was your daddy. Because you don't obey God, you argue with people, your, your attitude is nasty, vile, like vermin, like a vermin, like whatever, a, a, a venom, venom spitting out your mouth all the time. Nasty to people, mean to people, putting people down, calling people names, not, not praying for your enemies at all. Not being a witness, not making disciples. You ain't helping the church. You ain't helping the people. Yo, are you helping me? Are you helping me? Do I not teach you every single day and help you people? Are you helping this church? Probably not. Are you helping us to help Africa? Definitely not. Some are. Maybe, maybe 20 of you now. 
Are you obeying God? Or are you like, oh, I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to do that. No. I ain't not. Do you have an argumentative demonic spirit in you? Or are you saying, I'm obeying God. He is Lord of my life. Then make him Lord of your life, y'all. Because this ain't just for people that call themselves a Christian. That don't matter. I told you, it's those who believe in and obey the Lord God Almighty, his commandments. Jesus had earlier warned his followers. He said, then they will deliver you up. You're not out of here yet, y'all. Then they will deliver you, you, you up to tribulation and K-I-L-L-U. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake, Matthew 24, 9, which 24 is what he showed me in the desert. You better study your Bible, y'all. A lot of us have been lied to so bad. And Jesus got me here to help fix it for you, to help show it to you, the truth. And you better get ready for it. You know, in the last days, there's a great falling away from the faith. Did you know that? Do you believe the Bible, y'all? It's because somebody's lied to you and you ain't done your job to get down on your bed or your table and pick the Bible up with a notebook and a pen and your prayers and study the word of God. And you've just been listening to Pastor so-and-so tell you whatever you think because he looks so holy, right? And been leading you with deception already. You're here, brothers and sisters. The Bible tells you in Daniel and Revelation how long. Three and a half years. Get ready for it. And Jesus put me back here to tell you that, to show you that, and to help you get ready for it. You don't have your armor on straight, y'all. You will fall. Some of God's people are going to be here for this persecution. Some of these, some of God's people will survive this persecution. Yeah, some of, some of us will survive it. And some of us will be martyred. Do you understand that? So you say, how could today, the world today become a place where true Christians are hunted down and martyred? Or a better word, killed. Well, we're going to talk about that tomorrow. I'm going to let you ponder on this right now. And tomorrow we're going to pick this back up. And we're going to go on into Revelation 13. So, I want to see you guys, as I'm putting out for you, to doing the best I got to help you, man, to help you make it. Do you understand how much we're trying to help you here? Me. I have, I have helpers here, y'all. So, thank those of you that come here and study and learn. Thank you for helping us back so we can do it. That's the reason why God told you to help your teachers and preachers in the first place. Make sure we have what we need and our families so we don't have to go get a job so we can sit and help you and help other people. We have thank you to my husband who does a lot behind the scenes that you guys don't even know about. Thank you to Shanoa and Igor and, and Stephanie and Misha, Judy, Dave, Wendy, even Alice, Nicole, Fox, yeah. Different ones. They, they're, they're really helping a lot in this ministry. Kelsey. Kelsey comes in and shares a lot with us on Saturdays. You know, y'all, so there's a lot of people here putting out for Jesus and putting out to you. Why? To help you. Because you need help. That's why he said, Jesus said, forsake not assembling thyself together because you need each other because we're supposed to have the same spirit, Holy Spirit, supposed to help each other. More power there, y'all, more strength. So I want to thank those of you that's coming here and studying and learning and helping us back. Anything you need for that to obey God is in the description below on the video down there. Or you can go to our website, JesusDoers.com. Also, you can go to the contact page if you need specific prayer. If you're a young man or old man, reach out to my husband, Chris. He will, his contact information is there. He will pray with you. Emails there. Everybody else, reach out to any one of us. Okay, I just say reach out to Chris because I know Igor is double busy right now with a lot of stuff. So reach out to Chris. You can reach out to him too if you like, but 
Reach out to Chris. He's anointed by the hand of God as well. Jesus took him into the, I don't know where he was, not the desert. He'll tell you his testimony. All right. Thank you all again that sent me birthday stuff. I'm surprised, really, but I did. it's not my birthday yet. My birthday's Wednesday. I thank you all for caring for me and loving me and, show, and encouraging me. Thank you, guys. Uh, it's really we're like family. I appreciate you guys, what you did so far. I didn't expect it, but I thank you for loving me back. God bless you all. Give your life to Jesus, y'all. Make him Lord of your life. And go take the exams on JesusDoers.com on the test page. We're taking it down Sunday, so get her done. All right? I love you. I care about you. We'll pick this up tomorrow in Jesus' name.